Hey you guys, this is Raphael from ShilohRelics.com. Greetings from Tennessee. It is a beautiful day down here and we've got something really, really cool to look at today. Today we're going to talk about a Confederate made revolver. You got to be careful because 99.9% .9 of the Confederate revolvers you see out there are reproductions. They didn't make that many to start with and very few of them survive today, which is why you see a stout price tag on them when you do get a chance to own one. This is one of those, uh, like many of them, that were copied after the one of the most famous guns of the day, the Colt Model 1851 revolver that's referred to as a Navy. Like we've talked about before, not necessarily because it was used by the Navy, but the generic term for a 36 caliber revolver was the Navy. The 44 was the Army. That's just what they nicknamed them. Don't. Don't know, but that's what they do. So this one is a Confederate made version of that Colt Model 1851 Navy. One of the largest producers of the Confederate handguns, uh, the revolvers was a cat named Charles Rigdon, R-I-G-D-O-N. He joined forces with Thomas Leach of Memphis and they produced guns after Memphis fell, they moved to Columbus, Mississippi and made the famous uh, Leach and Rigdon revolver. After their partnership didn't work out too well, they moved, or he moved to Augusta, Georgia. Augusta, Georgia is where this gun would have been made. And they made them from 1864 to January of 1865. So just a little bitty gap, they made about a thousand of them. You'll see the serial numbers that will range from 1500 to about 2500. This one has all matching numbers of 2038. So it's right in that middle. So we know it's made 1864, Augusta, Georgia by uh, Charles Rigdon and his partner at that time, uh, Mr. Ansley. It was Rigdon and Ansley. They made a really nice gun for what they had to work with. When you look at the quality of the uh, manufacture of a Confederate handgun with a Union gun, they just didn't have the machinery to make them perfect like Mr. Colt did. You got to think, Colt been making them guns for a long time and he had the best stuff he could build them on and they're just <laughs> a lot better built from the start. Which is why you, uh, when you see a Confederate handgun, you, you automatically, if you know what you're doing, you're like, it wasn't as meant to start with as a mint cult. You expect it to have those little flaws and imperfections, which I love on these guns. When you look at a Confederate handgun, you can see those little imperfections because they were making do with what they had. When you look, one thing that I always look at on these, the back strap, which is the brass piece that goes here, where it joins the frame if you get one of those Italian copies, they're really well drilled out. They're perfect. They're real good guns. That They make them for reenacting that type of thing. When you look at an original Confederate one, look at this. Look how off cut the, the holes for those screws are. I mean, that's it's functional, which what was the key word for Confederate firearms. It was functional, but it wasn't perfect. And it's, this one's cool. They... Uh, a couple of things that you can see and know it's a Confederate one rather than a Union one. The barrel, the barrel is octagonal on a 51 Colt. With these, they're part octagonal, part round. This one has the original front sight on it, seven and a half inch barrel, fires a 36 caliber bullet. They're, uh, they serial numbered them like a Colt and they put them on every part just about because you had a table full of different guns. You needed to know which part was designed to go with it because they did hand fit them. With these, you can tell one of the later productions, the Rigdon and Ansley's from one of the Leech revolvers or one of the Leech and Rigdon revolvers as soon as you look at it because the little notches that go around the cylinder, they're called cylinder stops. This one will have 12 where the other ones have less. So 12 cylinder stops, seven and a half inch barrel, part round, part octagonal. The uh, grip and back strap are made of brass. This one has just a pretty thick honey color to it. Uh, it's a beautiful gun. I mean, it's got the look, it's got nice detail, but one thing that you see on this one that you don't see on the Griswolds, you don't see on several of the other revolvers, look up on top of the frame. 
It's got CSA, Confederate States of America. That's the letters that you want to see uh, on a uh, gun like this. And it lets you know right off the bat it is. Doesn't necessarily mean it's real. So if you just see one that some, some cat has stamped CSA on, be careful. Like I always tell you, know who you get it from. If they won't put that guarantee in writing, there's probably a damn good reason. And you should stay away from them peoples. You should buy from Chilo Relics because if I sell it to you, I will guarantee it to be what I tell you it is. This one uh, has the original grips. I almost forgot one of the coolest things about it. It has the original grips. Grips one piece walnut wood. These are pretty. You can tell they got wear to them. I like that. You know it just didn't sit in the drawer. This one was used. They, mm. on the bottom of the grip, on a Colt, on the sides of the grip, they'll put the stamp from the inspector. We all call it the cartouche. You'll see it nice and clear most of the times on a, a Colt because they had really good stamps and used them all over the place. These, they put on the bottom of the grip. So most of the time you can't see any of it. If it's got wear, usually it's always gone. This one, you can see outlines on it. It's a WH, a, the letters W and H. For Westcombe Huggins, Hudgens, 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 Hudgens. <laughs> but it's there, you know it's there. And that lets us know that it's one that the Confederate government actually bought. They didn't private purchase this or privately sell this gun. So we've got that, and on the back, looky right there. Here's a close-up of it. Got five notches. We don't know what that's for. It could be five squirrels, or it could be five Yankees. We just don't know. But it's pretty neat that it's on there, and it lets your imagination go wild. Because that's the fun of some of these antiques. You hold that gun, and you wonder, where did this go? Who had this? Was it a Georgia cavalryman? Was it... Uh, and you just, your mind can go wild because you don't know who it was or what it was. So this one's cool. Go on the Shiloh Relics. You can see pictures of it. As of the time of this video, like with 99% of them, you can own this piece. Uh, it's not cheap, but it's real. My buddy, Steve Mullinax used to say, he said, I never said it was cheap. I said it was real. And that always rings in my mind when somebody says, man, that's too high. Well, no. I guarantee it. I guarantee it's real. Uh, it ain't cheap because nobody gave it to me. I pay for every piece that I sell. Uh, so I hope you guys are doing well. I hope everything's going in your direction. Uh, I should have thought of something to say at the end of this one. I did not because I was so excited about getting to share this pistol with you because it's one of the first ones I've had in a while. I bought a huge collection had a lot of really pretty Confederate swords in it, a couple of Confederate revolvers. This one's the one that I wanted to show first because uh, I love sharing these things with you. And thank you guys for taking the time to share these videos, to like these videos. I read the comments. I don't always get to reply to them, but I do read them all. And I'm thankful for you guys. I appreciate y'all taking the time. I know every day you got crap y'all to be doing. I appreciate you taking time to be with me. I appreciate my life and I appreciate every one of y'all. And I hope today is the best day that you've ever had in your life because you deserve it. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.